Okay. So in terms of what we're going to cover tonight, so um, this workshop is going to cover largely the minor or medium sized projects. So that could be things from uh, developing new activities, um, refurbishments to change pavilions, improving your pitches, um, uh, maintenance machinery, uh, replacing goals and um, getting fencing or catch netting, that, that sort of thing. So um, it's going to be mainly those medium or, or minor sized projects. We won't be covering uh, the major projects. So whilst some of this may loosely apply, um, the new or replacement 3G pitches, uh, brand new change pavilions, uh, new grass pitch sites and stadium developments, we won't cover tonight. Um, I, I'm sure there will be people on the call who've got questions around these and we'll be happy to, um, to look in these uh, on a case by case. Um, we will probably be looking at doing something uh, around some of the major projects going into the new year, particularly as the foundations start to look to populate uh, the upcoming pipeline of projects. Um, but yeah, that's not not something that we're going to be able to cover um, this evening. Um, so in terms of the agenda, so it's going to be split into three parts. Part one is going to be looking at traditional funding sources for sports, so the places that you'd usually turn to find um, funding. So we've, we're really lucky to be uh, joined by Lee Suter from the Football Foundation, um, previously um, FDM at Kent FA, uh, Sophie Ward from Active Kent and Medway, um, and then I'm going to provide a little bit around um, the strategic grants from the Kent FA Foundation. Second part will be around uh, writing funding bids for broader funders. So <clears throat> those uh, those funding organisations that you wouldn't typically find advertising their funds to sports organisations, but um, but who uh, also do for, um, give funds to sports organisations. So we're going to be looking at um, uh, tips for writing funding bids through the lens of um, the National Lottery Community Fund, as an example. Uh, and then we've got uh, Bruce Topham from the Kent Community Foundation, um, who'll be looking at, at it from a funder's point of view, uh, in terms of what they would look to see in an application and what might be available for football clubs to to look at. Um, and then part three, we'll be looking at uh, pulling together your applicant contribution. So with most funding applications, they'll want to see um, an application from yourselves as the uh, applicant. So. We're looking at how you can possibly pull that funds, uh, those funds together. So we'll look at crowdfunding. Um, we'll look at easy fundraising. So we've um, got Ben Harper who will be able to talk a little bit about that. And then we've got uh, Claire Wybury from Kent Fa, who's our head of marketing and partnerships. We'll be looking at uh, sponsorship and um, partnerships. So um, that's that's what we've got on the agenda. So we'll try and uh, whiz through um, as quick as you can. Um, but we'll have some opportunities for questions as we go through as well. So part one, uh, as I mentioned, so traditional funding sources for sports. So we're kicking off with um, Lee from the uh, Football Foundation. So hopefully Lee should be able to take control at the top of the screen there and then um, start driving the, uh, driving the slides. Uh Evening, everyone. Aiden, it won't let me take control, so I'll do my best Chris Whitty okay. impression and just say next slide. Yeah, sure so that's all right. Um, evening, everyone. Uh, just to build on what Aiden said, a huge thank you for everyone at the Football Foundation and the Football Family just for your time you're giving up tonight. I know how precious your time is and how busy you are, so we do all appreciate it. So, the Football Foundation, uh, so I'm delivery manager. I cover Kent, Essex and Sussex. My role is to work with applicants with the slightly larger bids, but um, I can support with uh, the smaller grants, etc., and provide advice on that. Uh, the Football Foundation is the UK's largest sports charity. Uh, our traditional funding partners are the FA, the government and the Premier League. So that's that's really important to know because we get often asked questions around, can I go for Sport England as well as Football Foundation? Generally, the answer is no, because they're the same source of funding, i.e. the government. So that's an introduction to me and the Football Foundation, Aidan. Yeah. So in terms of the Football Foundation, what we fund, we fund anything from a set of mini soccer goalposts all the way up to Stadia 3Gs. 
and uh, community hubs. So the the hubs we work with are normally two, three si full size three Gs um, with additional elements. We've also got our multi sport agenda. So um, every project we take forward now of large capital or over twenty five, we ask a question around how can we involve and incorporate other sports. Um, you would have seen the release of the Lioness Legacy Fund that's come out, which allows us to activate additional projects. So we have a wide uh, span of offer from under 25 grants all the way up to the multi-million pound grants, which I know isn't the focus tonight, but I will touch on because I imagine some of you got some burning questions at the back. OK, so I'm just going to briefly run through all the slides and what I would say is reach out to myself, Aidan or Jeff at the County FA. Reach out to us with questions because every football club offer and want and demand is slightly different. So I'll just cover everything um, very generically. But if you have got any questions specific to your clubs, reach out to us. Um, so the under 25k is a really simple application to be fair from the football foundation we've made it as simple as possible it does cover items such as fencing goalposts minor works to change your rooms pitch maintenance which is through the grass pitch maintenance scheme drainage which could be slightly larger depending on what the recommendations are machinery such as tractors or um, additional tools that you need to uh, raise the spec of your pitch portable floodlights, storage containers and improvement to plane services. So that may be um, a mugger, for example, a motor games uh, surface that you need to improve on that you the fences are damaged or the lighting's damages or the actual surface needs repair or you want to upgrade from one surface to another. Um, the goalpost one is really easy. I suggest if you ever need any new goalposts or replacing goalposts, you might use of us. It used to be the uh, Football Foundation replacement goalpost scheme. However, um, people, we just used to get the same Google image of a rusty goalpost with every application. So we've opened it up to new now. So that application, if you've got an idea of what goalposts you after and what they cost that application takes about three minutes to do and you get a decision within six weeks so that's the easy one what i would say is where do you start is do your research get on the football foundation website find out what the criteria is the goalpost one is pretty simple you just need to find out how much the goalposts are going to cost you and where you're going to get them from and you get an offer a uh, conditional offer with the larger ones, you're probably going to need light for light quotes for any work you're going to do on fences, changing rooms, improving lights, shipping containers. You will need at least two to three light for light quotes um, to progress. There's other evidence that you might need. So the minor works to changing rooms might not be as simple as just your um, groundsman or facility manager just going in there with a massive hammer and knocking down a wall. It might be. Do we need some uh, surveys to see if it's structurally um, stable? Can it take a reconfiguration? What does it need, etc.? You need to build your case through evidence. So uh, gone are the days where it's just a case of we need this and we get on with it. We need to we need to build your evidence of what do you look like now? If we invest in this project, what might you look like in the future? How are you going to be inclusive? And I'll touch on that under the, the community engagement work you need to do. Uh, check your security tenure. So uh, with the smaller grants, uh, it's less rigorous, but that might fall into you gaining additional approval from the owner or the landlord, for example. So say you're going to look to uh, purchase a shipping container on Paris Council land or other land that doesn't belong to you. You might need to seek their approval, which might lead you needing planning approval. So look, go on the website, do your research reach out to Aidan and Jeff or myself and just make sure you're in a line. But the under 25 is a quite straightforward, quite straightforward application with a turnaround of six to eight weeks to get a decision. There's not many funders that offer that and that straightforward process. Next slide, please, Aidan. I'm really 
going to touch on this really quick. Not as quick as Aidan changing that slide, but I'm going to touch on this really briefly because I know this isn't part of it. But I know if you're involved in the club, you have small stuff that you need to get on with and you have huge dreams that you want to do as well. And you have aspirations. I get it. Our over 25K grants are typically free G's and changing accommodation. Brand new. Um, they're not cheap. They are big applications, so be prepared to come to the table with a funding plan if you do decide to go down that route. You need to ask, the project needs to ideally be strategically identified using the local football facility plan. Aidan's going to send up a follow email with links to your local football facility plan and when you can find it, and the play and pitch strategy, which you can find on your local authority website by just Googling it. They should have that published. Not everyone does. If you can't find it, come to me or Sophie will introduce herself and she's she'll have them somewhere in a cabinet in her house. Um, so the local football facility plan will strategically identify the projects in the area that are priority for investment and we will use that. The challenge is the local football facility plans are three to four years now, so they may be out of date. So you need to come to us with an idea of why we should take your project forward rather than one that's been identified in those documents. There's an increase, ex there's increased expectations on partnership contribution, so we never fund 100%. Um, typically, our larger grants go out between 70 and 77%. We are seeing an increase now because of everything that's going on in the world, um, and we are trying to mitigate costs now, so you won't see the, the larger 3Gs that you're probably used to. We're trying to mitigate our environmental commitment as well as reducing cost. Equal access to women and girls is non-negotiable. So that needs to be at the forefront of everything you're considering. So when it comes to changing accommodation, how are you making it inclusive? If it comes to a 3G, gone are the days where Tuesdays and Thursdays are boys and we find some room for the girls or women's teams. They need to be front and centre now. They need to be here. They need to have equal opportunity. Same for multi-sport as well and that, that community engagement along that line. So that's a very whistle stop tour of that because I know tonight is not the focus so do reach out if you have got any questions. So what makes a good project? I've already touched on it. Equal access for women and girls is non-negotiable now. It's one of our KPIs. It's one of our focus. Um, everything that's going on there should be no excuses for a growth in this area and providing this access but it needs to be appropriate access. It needs to be through community engagement identifying what those users need and how you make the environment correct for them. Strategically identified, so we talked about the local football city plan and the PPS, mm -hmm. but also about levelling up, um, and levelling up areas, areas of deprivation. Now, levelling up can be that postcode lottery element. Just because you're not in a levelling up area doesn't mean you might not have profound areas of deprivation. We all do have that. It might be around the corner, it might be a mile away, it might be a ward that's in there. It's about fight, it's about digging deeper and finding out actually what does our area look like? How do we how do we make this in um a project that involves all of our community and is access for everyone? Strong partnership funding I've already talked about. So reaching out to your local authority, see what 106 money or seal money they've got that might be linked to a housing development, but strategically you will need to find that funding and comprehensive community engagement which I'll talk about now. So if you're going to work with me on a big project you're going to get very bored of me saying community engagement. However it is the golden thread that runs through everything we knew, do now. You need to do thorough and deep community engagement. So you need to challenge what we think we know, dig deeper than the traditional training and match play. Is it how are we going to engage with low socioeconomic groups, uh, the areas of deprivation, how are we going to support people who have got disabilities or long term health conditions, equal access to women and girls and everything that incorporates that as well as multi-sports. So can we dig a little bit deeper? Ensuring the project is inclusive, um, and it goes away from that non-traditional project that we might see on um, historic 3Gs and Football Foundation projects. And it is all about building various relationships. And I've done that most recently with a project in Sussex with a football club. Didn't understand community engagement, hadn't done community engagement. 18 months later, they have a, they have a program of use for their new Stadia 3G 
that incorporates everything from underrepresented groups to those sleeping rough to walking football to rugby to women and girls to a pro club foundation everything is on there and it's fully engaging as well as neighboring clubs so they just haven't looked after their own there is a community engagement toolkit i will ask aiden to share it with you on a link it's got a community engagement log so as you start having these conversations, you can use that as your document to write down everything, who you're working with, what the feedback's been and how you're going to incorporate it into the project or might not incorporate into the project because it might not suit it. That document is mandatory with the larger projects, but also it's really good for trusts, trustees and committee members to work through that and go, when we talk about inclusive, are we? Or are we just making token gestures? Are we doing that deep, deep community engagement? And are we trying to stretch our thinking and making sure we are fully inclusive with no barriers? OK, I'll happily take any questions. If you if you feel like you want to unmute and tell me what your name is and where you're from, old school phone in. Um, then feel free to do so. If not, please email me. Could you talk about the post for application a bit more? Sorry, I couldn't really hear that. I heard the application and more. Yeah, you know, um, could you just go through how you make how you apply? Is it is it yeah. online? Yeah. So if you just Google Football Foundation apply, um, or type in apply football foundation it will take you straight to that site you select the items that you're interested in applying for and then that will take you to the application you may or may not need to set up a login depending if you've used it before uh, excuse me guys Hi guys, Gary Butcher at I Went Herons. I think I'm unmuted now, yes? Yeah, hi Gary. Hi. Um, I, apologies, I missed the first couple of minutes. Aidan, are we going to get be able to get a copy of this PowerPoint? Because it would yes. be lovely, lovely to share it with the rest of the committee members so that they, I can explain it to them. Yeah, not a problem at all. And also I'll uh, share a copy of the recording as well. So if you want to kind of share that with them and they want to watch it back, um, that's not a problem as well. OK, great. Thank you for that. Uh, I think, Kevin, you got a question? Yeah, Lee, that was really good. Kevin from Swanscombe, how are you doing? Um, yeah, we just obviously, we, we, work, we, work, we work very much with, with a local school and the pitch is in absolutely shocking condition. I missed the first couple of minutes, like the last gentleman said. Um, is there available funding for not only pitch improvement, but also the tools to do it? Because obviously that's going to be one of the key things for us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we talk about it being an under 25 grant. Actually, I think you, I believe you can go up to 50K now with a 75% contribution with the Football Foundation. It needs to be um, strategically identified, though, Kevin. So they need to do their pitch yep. power assessment. And one of the recommendations needs to be the machinery you're looking because we use that as the ev evidence document. So when it comes to pitches, we get lots of people saying we need this tools or we need drainage. We just need to back it up with that evidence. So absolutely. And Aiden is your expert and guiding light on that. Brilliant. Yeah, Thanks, I'll, be, I'll get in touch with you um, tomorrow on that, Kevin, and we can um, yeah get that process um, underway. I, I'll just do Brilliant. one more, Thanks, Aiden. Mate. Yep. Aiden, I'll just do one more question and then, and then I'll let you move on because I know you're tight for uh, yeah, no Steve. Steve, really good question. What is 106 money? So 106 money is um, when there's a housing. So if you take a housing development, for example, the housing developer may have to commit a contribution to the community for work they're doing. So a, an example would be if they're building on a football pitch, they might have to replace that football pitch elsewhere might be the contribution. Quite often, the new housing developments are on uh, farming land, for example, but they might have a 106 agreement, which would be to invest in the local infrastructure. So building roads, libraries, um, anything like that. But also they might have a commitment to open space or sport. Really good follow up question. How do you know if there is 106 
funding. Well, your local authority is a really good starting point. So reach out to your local authority as long as you've got a really good local authority that helps. All 106 documents should be linked to the planning application of that housing. Now, local authorities can sometimes say they're not black and white. I actually think they are the 106 documents when you get a hold of them and read through them. It tell you exactly when it's due, how much and what it's for. So reach out to a local authority if you can, if you've got a contact there, ask that question. Have you got any 106 money or who is your 106 monitoring officer and just have a conversation with them about it. Brilliant. Thanks so much for that, Lee. And um, yeah, no, some really good uh, information there, which hopefully will um, yeah, stimulate some thoughts amongst those that are, um, are, are attending tonight. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see a lot more uh, applications coming in um, to the foundation soon. So um, thanks so much for that. And um, yeah, so now we'll move on to the next um, next part, which is um, Sophie Ward from Active Kent and Medway. Hi everybody, I'm going to try and do what Lee couldn't do and actually take control of the slides. Does it let me? Am I showing you up or not? No, it's not working. Aww. Wait, no. Is it working or not, Aidan? Oh, I can do it. Yay! That's the first thing I beat him at. Um, okay, so I am um, Sophie Ward. I'm from Active Kent and Medway. Hopefully some of you may know us as Kent Sport. We've uh, recently had a uh, rebrand name change um, to Active Kent and Medway, which is a bit more of a mouthful. So if you feel like calling us Active Kent or Active Medway, wherever you geographically sit, feel free to do so. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a whistle stop tour about some of the grants that we have in house, because I'm conscious that the agenda allows for a lot of experts in the room um, from different organisations who will be able to give you um, a lot more knowledge around funding and, and application process and things. So I'm just going to give you a little whistle stop tour. Um, for those of you that don't know, we are one of 43 active partnerships across the country. Um, each active partnership sits um, traditionally to a geographical boundary. So like I said, we are active Kent and Medway. Um, we are part funded by KCC Public Health now and part funded by Sport England. So that's where our money comes from. And fortunately, because of those relationships, we do tend to get thrown um, pots of funding every now and then, uh, one of which came to me on Friday, was and you're going to be my first test um, to see what you think of it um, when I run through these. So the first um, grant that we've got available in house, it's a relatively small pot of money. Um, it's up to five hundred pounds. Um, but what this enables you to do is um, apply for funding for things that aren't traditionally easy to get. Um, basically, any equipment that you might need um, for your club, um, any venue hire. And we also will fund marketing and publicity. So if you are um, looking at uh, producing flyers or a website or something like that for a new project then we can actually support the funding for that um, what we what we traditionally like to see as applications for this grant is if you're looking to test and learn something so it might be within your club that you're looking at I don't know starting a new girls section or you want to give walking football a go or something like that but you're not 100% sure that you want to invest too much money into it this is the sort of thing that we can support um, you to do um, through that grant the one thing I will say is that we we traditionally like to fund 50 percent of the costs. So if you can in any way make your project total project cost add up to a thousand pounds and then apply for the 500, that thousand pounds doesn't need to be um, cash. It can be volunteer time. Um, so any time in hand and things like that or any venue hire that you might be be given for free that um, has an attribute of cost towards it. So it can be made up in different ways. Um, what we've done with this grant, because we are conscious it is £500, we have made the process as simple as we possibly can. Um, it's an online form. Um, if you've got your constitution in front of you, it will take you under 10 minutes to fill out. Um, and the other good thing um, is that it, we have a two week turnaround on this grant. So when you submit, you, you will be you you will be notified within two weeks as to whether you've got it. Um, and then you can return your paperwork to us. And the, the speed of that process is really, really quick. So we are conscious that we know it's 500 quid, but we're going to make it as easy as possible for you to get that 500 pounds. 
Um, the next grant that we've got links quite nicely to what Lee was saying about the Football Foundation grants. Um, this is our Kent County Council Capital Grant Fund. Um, now, this is for facilities projects or any fixed community equipment. Um, so if you are working on a capital project and you've got a shortfall or equally, if you want a first port of call to come to, because I know traditionally the Football Foundation want to be the last port of call, they want to be the last funder. What this does is quite nicely give you a little pot and say, actually, KCC likes this project. And sometimes that can go a long way with other funders because we can be quite um, ruthless with our um, ch checklists of what we need to see. Um, so this one's up to £10,000. The next um, deadline for this is actually the end of February. So we work to the last working day of the month. Um, so the next deadline for this is February. So if you've got anything you're looking at, um, we we're very good at funding those awkward projects like storage containers um, that you might need on your site for equipment and things. Um, equally, if you've got a large scale project that you're just looking at addressing that shortfall or having a name going against um, what you're looking at fundraising for, we can support that as well. Uh, so like I say, that's up to £10,000 and the next deadline is in February. Um, the other two that I wanted to talk to you about around internal grants, we have a coach and officials bursary in-house at Active Kent. Um, what this does is if you've got anybody working or anyone aspiring to becoming a coach, we will pay um, towards that qualification. Now, we won't fully fund a qualification, but we can give you a, a, a donation, a grant towards that. And that can be anyone aspiring to coaching or officials. Um, we do have a small pot of money that we are trying to address that imbalance of female coaches to male coaches. So traditionally, there is a little bit more money available for female coaches. Um, equally, if your club is looking at doing uh, running a course in house, whether it be a mental health training course, a first aid course, safeguard, and if you want to do a bespoke course for your club, um, we can offer a contribution towards that so you can get more for your money, essentially. Um, so that is the coaching officials bursary. Um, we also have and I don't know how relevant this will be but um, there might be some um, talented athletes in the room if you have anyone within your club that is competing at elite level so I'm talking kind of the top 10 um, in the county so they might be playing for Kent schools or something like that and equally same with the veterans um, we have grants to enable to support them to go to training competitions or whether they need specialist equipment or travel or accommodation, anything like that. So there are grants available for those people up to £400. Now, there's no upper age limit on this, but there is a young age limit on this. So they have to be over six years old to um, apply for that funding. And all we would need to see in order for them to achieve the funding is a letter of invitation from wherever they've been invited to on that elite um, play a pathway what we won't um, support is any clubs uh, any young people in academies unfortunately we just can't support like development academies and things but if they are playing for like a Kent school standard or England schools or anything like that then we can support that and then finally, this one is hot off the press. Like I said, I just found out about this on Friday. So um, apologies, Aidan. It's a bit of a, mm -hmm. I don't, I haven't even told you about this one. Um, so we, like I said, we get left field pots from Sport England and KCC because of where we sit and how we're funded. And this is the latest one. So um, Sport England recently told us they would like to pilot a multi-sport fund with us in Kent. Uh, we've been selected. We're one of two across the country, which is very exciting, but also a lot of work. Um, the premise of the um, application is that we're looking for any um, projects that any sites that have already received Football Foundation funding. Um, so anyone who's already had any form of funding from the Football Foundation previously, where we can activate activate those sites. Now, we're looking at any it doesn't necessarily have to be football but obviously for the nature of this audience it can be but it can be broader than that so if you are looking at bringing in a bit of revenue to your facility and you've got a walking group or a cycling group or a yoga group that you want to bring in this potentially could fund that for you so there's up to ten thousand pound grants to to start new activity on any Football Foundation funded site. Um, the idea is that those that will take priority will be around the four demographics I've listed there. So we're looking at projects that will support people with long term health conditions, um, people from culturally diverse communities, um, disabled people and people from lower socioeconomic groups. So 
at the moment this will not be an open pot of funding um we are soliciting applications so if you think this is something that you could deliver on your site please let me know um, and i'm happy to take a team's call and we can chat through what the project might look like um the challenge with this funding and as i say we get thrown things um it has to be out the door by the end of march this year um, it doesn't mean your project has to be complete or even started. It just means that we have to put the money in your account by the end of March and have an idea of what you're going to be doing over the over the uh, next year. Um, like I say, that one's very much hot off the press. So I think I've put everything I know about it on that slide. <laughs> um, but if, if anyone does have any um, ideas of how they might want to work differently with those user groups, please let me know and uh, we can have a chat about that. Like I say, it was a bit of a whistle stop tour. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is that as at my role as funding and partnerships manager, um, I work quite closely with Aidan and Jeff Lee around um, multiple projects um, and can support you if if you're achieving Football Foundation funding and there's a shortfall to that, um, or equally if if they don't, they can't. Um, they can't fund you and you, you're looking for funds elsewhere, please do come to us because that is my job. Um, I'm conscious that we, we don't charge for this service. It's all completely free um, and we can look at those shortfalls in funding for you um, and offer you advice and support and point you in the right direction, hopefully, um, if there is one. So um, please feel free to drop down my contact details. Um, and if you want to catch up at any point, I'm always around. Um, I'm traditionally better on email than I am on phone, but uh, yeah, I'll, I will get back eventually. <laughs> um, but that's me. So I don't know how you want to do questions, Aidan, if you want to just if you want to do it or you want me to just take them or if there isn't any. <laughs> um, yeah, we could just have a um, yeah quick scan to see if there are any um, any questions. I think, Kevin, you've got your hand up, but I think that might be a legacy hand from um, from after Lee's one. Um, quick scan. Uh I think you've got away scot free, Sophie. Oh, nice! I've given I've given too much information or too little, but my yeah. contact details are there if you um if you want to get in touch. Brilliant! Thanks Thank so you. much for that. Perfect. Okay, so um, we'll now just move on. So um, we're going to now go into the Ken FA Foundation. Um, so in terms of what the Ken FA Foundation is, so this is. Uh, the charitable arm um, of the Kent FA. So um, when you think about the yellow and red card uh, money and where that kind of goes, it, it largely will go into um, into the foundation, which reinvests funds back into um, the grassroots game and has done since it was incepted in 2018. So um, there's a particular grant that I uh, was going to speak to you about, which is the strategic grant where you can access between two thousand and five thousand pounds. So um, this is towards projects that have a positive impact on um, increasing participation levels or clubhouse refurbishments, um, pitch improvement or football development projects. So as Sophie kind of mentioned in the um, uh, update from Active, Active Kent and Medway, this could actually be seen as uh, a part of your partnership funding as opposed to your entire funding for a project. Um, obviously, it's only between 2000 and 5000, so it's not likely to have much of an impact towards those huge projects. Um, but certainly if you're thinking around clubhouse refurbishments, that might be a kind of 20, 25 grand sort of project and you need some partnership funding. Whilst the Kenneth Faith Foundation would want to know that you as a club are putting a little bit of money in as well. It might just help you leave us some um, additional funding from the likes of the Football Foundation. Um, and the funds are limited. So obviously, if we get completely overwhelmed with applications to the foundation, even if your project meets all of the criteria, you won't necessarily um, be able to uh, to definitely get your project delivered if um, there's obviously an over um, uh, over subscribe uh, subscription of uh, applications, so um, just something to bear in mind. Um, so, in terms of uh, what you'll need to do to apply, so you can visit kentfafoundation.co.uk, um, and you'll be able to see the strategic grant on there. Um, the application is relatively straightforward. So, uh, on the form, it will ask for a description of the project. Um, any risks that are associated with the project. So by that we mean, is there any reason why the project might not be delivered if we were to, uh, I say we, if the foundation were to uh, award you the funding? 
um, a financial plan. So how do you intend to spend the funds that you're requesting um, and what does success look like over the next few years? So are you going to see an increase in engagement in a certain area of your club or the entire club? Um, what's it going to help you do that you can't currently do? So as part of that, you'll need to submit a football development plan. So there's a template that's on the website. Um, you can download that and then just start completing it. It will ask you various um, questions around um, what you've currently got. So this could be uh, the numbers of teams in um, in the different age groups and what you're thinking you're going to be able to deliver as a result of um, of this funding, really. So just kind of nailing some of the detail um, around what you're going to achieve. So um, as I said, quite a straightforward one um, worth having a look at. It's open um all year round so it's not like it has a particular closing date um but yeah worth having a look into and um yeah seeing if it will help you to deliver um what your ambitions are so just looking at part two so writing funding bids for broader funders so as i mentioned we're gonna go through um uh some tips so this is around kind of things that you might do for broader funders that you might not need to do for the Football Foundation or Active Kent Medway or Sport England as traditional sport funders. Um, and then we've got Bruce Topham who's going to be speaking to us around um, the viewpoint of uh, what a, uh, this type of funder might be looking to see. So the National Lottery Community Fund. Um, so obviously when you're buying your lottery tickets, this is where some of the money goes um, so we're going to be looking at this through the lens of one of their um, one of their programs which is the National Lottery Awards for All. Um, so they've got funds between uh, £320,000 to support projects over potentially a two-year period um, and that can be to deliver uh, new or ex existing activity um, or to support um, an organisation to change or, or adapt to future challenges. So thinking about when the pandemic came along, um, that that would have been a fund that people would have been able to access, uh, referencing that they've had to change their circumstances or something's affected what they were able to deliver previously. Um, so they need some funding to be able to, um, to deliver what their ambitions are. So the four aspects, and it's worth kind of just uh, noting these. So, bringing together, uh, bringing people together to build strong relationships uh, in and across communities. So, um, with that, you might be thinking around uh, that community engagement piece. So, in terms of you know your club, you know the people within your club, but do you know who else is around the club that isn't involved? Have you got a diverse enough offer of activity that engages a broad enough community? Um, Improving the places and spaces that matter to communities. Again, you might have a football clubhouse which is excellent at doing what it needs to for football, but actually, if you developed one of the spaces to be a more flexible space, could you get a local yoga group in or um, your local Age UK to come in and use the space for something different so that it's not just utilised on a um, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, but also during the week as well and has a broader kind of community impact? Um, can you help more people to reach their potential by supporting them at the earliest possible stage? So looking at that kind of um, preventative work, thinking about health and well-being and, and the mental health uh, agenda and thinking, actually, can you do any preventative work that stops people from um, from suffering from mental health issues uh, and supporting people, communities and organisations who are facing demands and challenges because of the cost of living crisis, which obviously is impacting everyone some more than others um yeah is the project that you're proposing going to be able to uh help you to achieve that so in terms of tips um checking that you're actually an eligible applicant is probably the most paramount tip there's uh quite a lot of occasions where um people will apply for things that they're not eligible for, which doesn't mean they're not eligible for any funding from that that funder or even from uh, other funders. But it's it's always worth just making sure that you are actually an eligible applicant before proceeding. Otherwise, you're wasting quite a lot of time um, looking into it. Um, 
so you might need to be the right type of organization so you might be thinking around uh are you an incorporated organization are you listed as a community um uh, amateur sports club are you listed as a charity what's the right uh, type of organization type that you need to be in order to access funds from that funder um, and you might need to evidence that you've got um, uh, an established board or multiple uh, committee members or trustees um, who aren't related to each other in order to be able to access that. So I've dropped a link on there, um, which uh, I won't go into tonight, but if you click on it once the, uh, the slide deck comes through, um, it will just have on there um, some information that will help you get that information from the National Lottery Community Trust in terms of eligibility for that fund. Um, next, you need to find out about the funder themselves. So do they have a governing document? What what are the organisation trying to do? Who who are they? What's their kind of strategic uh, aims and, and goals? Uh, and where do they get their money from? So um, obviously from an active Kent and Medway point of view, Sophie mentioned around uh, the funding they get from KCC, the funding they get from Sport England. You can start having a look beyond active Kent and Medway and going, actually, what are Sport England's strategic goals? What are... Um, Kent County Council strategic goals because they're going to tie into what Active Kent Medway do and obviously that's from a sport perspective from a non-sport funder it's the exact same process you need to be looking at actually what are they trying to achieve and, and maybe how can we help them to achieve what they're wanting to do um, is it public money who are the decision makers um, and what's their motive so again a couple of links there where you can have a look into the National Lottery Community Fund uh, and see what they're about and what they're kind of strategic focus is. Um, so the funder is going to want to know, is there a business case? So you're proposing this project and you're um, saying that you're going to have all this great impact. Well, actually, how do they know that what you're saying is actually going to be what you are actually able to deliver? How can you evidence this? So like Lee mentioned with the Football Foundation, community engagement is huge so can you speak to not only your own community but the communities around you and those that you don't traditionally engage um and evidence that they've said oh actually if there was this facility or if there was this new program on offer we would come and engage in it um really what a lot of funders are keen to see is uh, co-design which is where um you're not designing the project before you've spoken to the community that you're potentially going to engage and you actually get them as part of the design process and then you use what they've said to design what the program or project looks like and then you kind of submit your application for funding towards it so you might be looking at doing surveys or focus groups letters of support from um, neighboring organizations uh, or just inquiries that you've had through um, prior like have you got an existing waiting list of people that are wanting to engage with your club um they're also going to want to know as as a funder about you um so not you as the individual but you your organization so who you are where you are um they, they're going to want to know a bit of demo uh, like uh, demographic information so lee mentioned previously around leveling up areas um areas um of uh, multiple deprivation so if you are in an area or you're near to an area that's uh, high on that list of uh, IMD, put that in because that's going to be really uh, beneficial for the funder to see because they're wanting to give their money to those that need it most. So if you can articulate, actually, we've spoken to um, this community, they're based in this ward, which is a really deprived area. They, they don't have access to X, Y, and Z. What we're proposing is going to give Z and you've really told that story um obviously it's always good to give that primary data as well around you as an organization what you currently do but certainly adding in and layering in that secondary information around um like kind of the external context around you will um will be something that will be really important for funders to see um they're also going to want to see how the project's going to make a difference so now that you've done that community engagement you've you've kind of laid in what the kind of situation is in terms of the um the demographic that you um that you that you you're within um they're going to want to see actually once this project's delivered what's the outcomes going to look like and it's really important particularly as football clubs that you think beyond sport for sport's sake we all know the massive 
uh, impact that you're going to have as clubs on the football outcomes. Kids playing football, adults playing football, the older generation playing football, women playing football, wh- whoever it is that's engaging in the game. We know that it's a really good game. They're going to enjoy it. There's going to be great benefits um, from them doing that. But is there anything more that you can kind of say that's going to um, going to have going to be there in terms of outcomes? So remember, these are funders who aren't sport focused, so they're going to want to see other other outcomes too. Um, and are you able to reach new participants and audiences who can't currently access you as well? Um, as I mentioned, they're going to want to give their fund to those who need it most. So, um, yeah, as I said, there needs to be something unique about your project that makes the funder go, we we have to give the money here. There's so many clubs, football clubs, sports clubs, who will apply for funding and say, we can get more kids playing football or playing sport, which is great. But what makes it unique and different from the hundreds and thousands of other clubs who will ask, be asking for the same money? and um, saying the same kind of thing. So uh, again, I've dropped another link in there, um, which will kind of give you a bit of an insight into what the National Lottery Community Funds think um, they they kind of would want to see in terms of uh, a project that really does make a difference. Um, it's really key to develop partnerships. So funders absolutely love projects with multiple partners because it looks more sustainable. It shows great commitment. It shows that you've done wider community engagement. Um, it's just it's it, it it ticks huge boxes. So, in terms of who you're thinking, in terms of um, partnerships, it doesn't necessarily need to be the most obvious. So, I know schools will be quite a relatively obvious partner to work with. They've got kids who may be potential players within your club. Um, but can you also think outside your obvious network? So thinking about a local yoga group, as I mentioned before, that might come and use your clubhouse if you're doing a clubhouse development and you're creating a, a, a space that can be used as a, um, a a place for people to get their food and coffee and stuff like that. But can it also be used for um, local Age UK group to come and use and, uh, and do some kind of activity in, as, in there as well? So that it's used kind of beyond just, as I said, a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, and then with those partnerships, can you get letters of support to upload if possible? You'll need to check with the uh, on the application forms to see if it will allow you to upload uh, additional documentation. Otherwise, getting those might not be um, so worthwhile. But um, even if you can include uh, quotes of of what I don't know the um, uh, what someone senior within that organisation has said in terms of their support for the project, that will um, that will also carry uh, a lot of weight. And then sustainability is uh, really critical. So funders aren't going to fund you forever. Um, so then they're going to need to see a plan of how you plan to uh, continue the activity um, or to deliver um, the, the facility and, and keep running the facility beyond the point at which they uh, are funding it. So you're going to need to ask your, yourself if the uh, project that you're proposing is going to be able to generate enough income to help it sustain itself. Um, and it's 100 percent worth uh, looking at how you can generate that income, and not relying on uh, external funding, because whilst you might end up using another external funder to to help you at the end of a funding period, uh, there's no guarantee that there will be funding there. So you need to be kind of trying to build in that sustainability right from the start. Um, and then. When you've planned your spend, it's just worth double checking that it's in line with the funder. You might need to move figures around a little bit. So if there's um, you you worked out what the project is, what you need to spend on the project, you might just need to shift monies around a little bit to go. Actually, um, the funder saying they won't fund this. So what can we do in terms of where where our own contributions going in order to um, to make maybe we're going to fund uh if they're if they're saying right we're not going to fund um coaching staff but we want coaching staff as part of our program actually maybe our contribution is going to be towards the coaching staff and then the funder will be able to pay for the other uh, elements for example so it's just worth um checking what those are um with some of the tangible bits you might need to get multiple quotes um obviously we've saw with the football foundation that 
um, with some of the um, the grants, they'll like to see two like for like quotes. So um, it's worth just kind of making sure you've done that bit of research and, and know that you're getting good value for money. Um, and then in kind contributions are always something that you can uh, think about in terms of your planned spend. So this is um, your contribution to the project that isn't cash um, contribution. So it could be right as part of the project, we're going to give access to our facility for X number of hours a week. Uh, and that's got a, um, a tangible value. So you can write right. We would usually hire that space for 30 pounds uh, an hour. So you can add that in as a as a non cash cost contribution, um, and yeah, that that sometimes in certain projects can can be your applicant contribution. Um, the um, the the link at the bottom there is uh, again just going to kind of give you a bit of an idea as to with that particular fund um, what you're allowed to kind of spend on it. So. Um, and then last couple of bits, so sense checking before submitting. I know this is kind of maybe teaching you to suck eggs a little bit, but um, it's worth always getting a couple of people to proofread it before you submit, just to kind of make sure that the point you're trying to make, you're getting across well and it makes kind of um, good sense. Um, it, they'll often have word counts on there. Don't feel like you need to write to it. Um, it. It will be there to kind of give you a bit of a guide, but don't don't feel like you have to write for writing sake. Um, it's better to be concise, um, but obviously do make sure that you do get your point across. And probably the most key one is to make sure that in each section you answer the question that's being asked. So don't waffle too much about a lot of stuff that's not answering the question that's been asked for that particular box. Um, and then, yeah, just don't forget that sport being good for people is not necessarily enough for a funder that isn't specialized in funding sport um so yeah summary um check your eligible research the funder and, and the source of their funding and motives make sure you tell the funder about where you are and who you are evidence the business case and show that you've engaged with the community before you even design the project uh tell the story about how the fund are going to make a difference and why your project is unique um and then make sure you develop that strategic partnership that will um, help you deliver a project um, and that you've planned to spend. Um, you've ensured that you've factored in sustainability um, and how that project can continue to deliver the outcomes be, uh, beyond the funding. And then when you're ready to submit, just make sure you've proofread it um, or and got someone else to kind of sense check it just before you kind of go through really. So, um, that's uh, pretty much it. So if you um, yeah click on those links when I send the um, bits rounds, then hopefully you'll um, yeah be able to have a look at it from 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 that point of view. Um, I won't pause for questions just at this point because we've got Bruce um, Topham next from uh, Kent Community Foundation, and it's going to be on a similar um, theme, but from obviously uh, uh, one of these funders' like point of view. So um, yeah, we'll pick up questions around this section uh, after we've had um, Bruce. So Bruce, I don't know if you're able to take control or whether it will, um, whether that option's at the top there. Ah, uh, there we go. Cool. Uh, you're just on mute at the moment though. I'm back. Is that all right? Can you hear me, yep. Hayden? Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the um, <clears throat> for the invitation. And I, I sat here the last five minutes of your presentation. You were just pretty much saying what I was <laughs> in mind. So um, there's a fair amount of crossover. Um, but yeah, this is another kind of whistle stop tour. So so Kent Community Foundation, we're one of 47 community foundations across the country, roughly one per county. Um, the area that we cover, because I was, I was looking up Kent FA's sort of coverage, so we, we cover the 12 districts of Kent as defined under by KCC and uh, also Medway. So if you are in Bromley, uh, Orpington, that kind of way, that's not somewhere that we can fund. Um, the good news is there is London Community Foundation, which will be able to look at um, potential applications in terms of that. Um, 
so we we've been around 20 or so years we are privately funded so um, we have either organizations we have um individuals families who have either inherited made their money in the county or whatever want to put something back into that particular space that they've um, been successful um and we manage about 100 different funds across across the county um some of them are based on purpose uh for example say we've got funds that concentrate on children young people which would cut across an awful lot of uh football organizations football clubs um and we've got a number of geographical ones um so for example say we have a fund with uh port of dover so if the dover area you would have a strong chance of funding in terms of an application to them we do have one fund within Ashford District, which is Ashford Leisure Trust, and that specifically focuses on the encouragement of um, physical activity for young people, and they do grants up to ten thousand pounds. So there's there's quite a wide range of of, of, of offer that we've got. Um, and as I said, I suppose that if anyone's got any questions, then please do pick up with me. Um, uh separately in, in terms of that because it's it's just quite a wide range of funds across uh, across the space that we operate within um so that, that wasn't it thought it was going too well right so uh smaller charitable and voluntary organizations so um Thank you, Aidan. Um, sporting groups, football clubs, oh, it's, it's one example of some of the types that we fund. Um, most of our funding goes to organisations with a turnover or an income of under a couple of hundred thousand. And, and most of our funding will go to um, organisations where there's little or no paid staff, a lot of volunteer work. Um, so we try not to make it too prescriptive. Um, and pretty much we'll fund we'll fund anything so we either fund new projects or existing projects um core costs um particularly bearing in mind what's happened in terms of um energy costs and other other associated costs over the last sort of 12 to 18 months we, we we cover a wide range um we look for the impact that you provide if you are successful with a grant and that's quite important and i'll mention that at, at the end uh we fund um groups and individuals uh majority of ours goes to to uh, groups and organizations uh registered charities community interest companies community groups such as such as you guys um so that's who we are typically we we fund up to five thousand pounds um, although we do have one particular fund, uh, which is a microgroups fund, which funds up to up to two thousand um, pounds, depending on the, the sort of lead or what you're looking for, we suggest you have a conversation with us to um, to get a feel for where where best to apply. Um, and I was trying to think back of because I've been out to see various groups and organisations, football clubs, and I'm just thinking in terms of types of things that I I know we funded um new equipment uh and that's complete kits balls goal posts all things like that nets uh qualifications for coaching uh first aid training volunteer costs even a couple of defibrillators as well so there's quite a wide range and scope of things that we would uh consider in terms of in terms of the funding um but from our perspective then um just thinking about some of the uh potential things that we could uh look at in terms of um uh, in terms of things that we would look for as a, as a as a grant funder um i think say aiden's crossed on an awful lot of those anyway but um the first thing we we look at is to put yourself in the um in the eye of the funder if you like what what do you think they look for and that and a link to that is just is the guidance and the guidelines and making sure you are reading the individual fund that you're applying for um just make sure that what you're applying for you actually qualify for that's that's really important particularly because 
you know most of that's you know, pretty much all that is done by volunteers and not by uh and not by p paid employees so it's, it's your time your time is precious you're already giving up an awful lot of your own time uh in the support of your respective clubs um so it's just making sure that you're reading the guidelines and the guidance notes um make sure you answer the questions that are asked um and again just referring back there if it says do it in 100 words do it in 100 words if you don't think you need to do 100 words then just put in there the, the pertinent points that you need to put in there don't don't feel like you need to just just pad it out just to fill up that space and again that's a something I didn't mention mentioned previously um keep it nice and simple keep it local I think that's that's important so we we talked about um in previous presentations about the the indices of multiple multiple deprivations or the IMD so again we will look at things like that and we will look at where that particular activity is taking place um and if you are seeking to make a point using perhaps countywide statistics that might be a different point of view to uh, a particular ward or an area within within Kent there might be a different point of view there so keep it local because that makes it nice and relevant um if you've been operating as a, as, as a club for a, for a while then again you'll be able to evidence who you are and what you've done um and also you know how many teams you're running who you're running how many girls or women's teams you've got and all of that that again fits in that so for us it's very much about making sure um that we're providing an opportunity to allow people to do something they wouldn't be able to get a chance to do um and that's that's really important in terms of making sure that we've got those those things set up for uh, for clubs to be able to do that um we ask you not to shoehorn in in extras um so if you've got so we, we talked about an application that would go up to five thousand pounds if you've got two and a half thousand pounds you think that's okay that's what else do i need to get it up to that figure don't feel obliged to put that sort of information in there um again it starts to dilute the message you're getting across um if you're trying to add in things there um and we don't want to go through sort of picking out things and saying well we can't really do this or can't do that um choose your we ask for a reference so choose you whoever's doing your your reference with care it needs to be someone who's who's relevant and um linked to the organization or the club but not personally involved um so it could it could be a parent or something like that but someone who's going to have a perception of that and be able to just explain succinctly who you are and, and what you do um and, and get before you're submitting an application i would, I would get someone someone you trust to be able to to read that application and that's really quite important so for us as a funder we we don't critique an, uh, an application and mark it in an exam style and, and if it's missing something we're not just going to automatically reject it some funders do and that's partly based on the fact that the volume of applications that they receive um they'll have to do an initial sift um and, and the first ones they'll take out were the ones where not everything is complete or things are missing or not everything's been filled out we, we don't necessarily work like that because we again it's, it's recognizing um that much of this is done by volunteers and you you don't need to be penalized for something like that um but if you've got someone you know and trust that is not going to just say yeah it looks fantastic we want them to give their honest opinion uh and if they can't quite understand what you've written uh they can tell you that um there's a tremendous amount of or we we see a tremendous amount of volunteers and people working their socks off in in in, in the space that we work in um and if you talk to someone about a, a, a project or a plan chances are they'll be able to explain it really succinctly and really really clearly but getting that information down onto onto an application form um and in a limited number of words sometimes doesn't always work so again once an application is submitted to us i think for us it's the key is just drawing that information out of um uh, out of the individuals um 
and once you've got there and we we mentioned i think a couple of um couple of applications that we've got so one we've got as an example is a, is a micro groups fund um and typically that will fund up to two thousand pounds and you'll get a response in in four to six weeks um if you are successful for example on that and you come back and say um and you provide your impact <clears throat> that's important um Ultimately, what we do is we look to build up a relationship with an organisation over a period of time. Uh, you know, we were formed, I think, in 2001 with there's four or five organisations that receive funding in that year that are still getting funding from us. Um, so ultimately, the aim is to build that relationship with a group. But if you are. If you are providing the feedback and we support you with the uh, the way in which you provide that feedback or that impact, um we then will turn that into a report to go back to our funders um and if the impact's good and it's 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 significant the chances are they they then look to fund again so it, it's about also having a relationship potentially with a funder um and it allows you then also to showcase what you've done and then use the information that you've brought together in that impact report and then potentially take that somewhere else um, for funding as well. So um, there's it's important that we just, you know, you're following that process through and getting that impact back uh, at the right time as well. Um, just one, one caveat, which when this was booked um, wasn't officially confirmed, but we have just for the moment decided to take on a new IT system. So as a consequence, <laughs> Grant, our grant making is temporarily shut until the new year um, for us to um, put a new IT system in. And the ultimate aim for that is to is to make um, applying as easy as possible uh, in terms of supporting documents and everything and things like that as well. But timing, as they say, is is, is perfect, I think, in, in terms of that. But we're, we're happy to come out and see projects in action or see the space in which you are, because that's important for us, because when when that's done, we're talking then to a funder. We're saying, look, we know this group because we've been to see them. We can see what they're doing. We can see what they're planning. Here's here's a bit more detail in addition to the application. So it adds a bit of context for us. Um, we are always happy to to pick up via uh, phone or email in terms of um, any conversations around around the application um, for further information or just to check things. Uh, in terms of accounts and, and uh, signatories and all things like that. So uh, again, we we look for that active encouragement to work together to get you uh, in, in in a successful application. Um, we are probably I think probably around sixty percent of our of applications to to us are successful, um, which is slightly below some of the lottery ones, but above a lot of other funders as well so um particularly if you're doing volunteer fundraising the, the key is knowing where to to look for which will give you the greatest chance of success i think that's important as well but as i said we we actively encourage uh organizations and groups to talk to us and and and, and ex um if, if there's any questions we're we'll happy to to pick up around the process time scales uh and ultimately other funders elsewhere that may be interested aside from the ones obviously tonight but um other funders that may be interested in in supporting the type of project that you're coming to us with um sorry problems with my um moving of the uh, slides no, there no on that one but um the presentation is available for um for Aiden then to send out and right at the end the last page you've got my um contact details on there as well so like I said, if anyone wants to catch up further, wants to have a conversation, more than happy to um, to speak to anyone either on Teams or face to face. Brilliant. Thanks very much for that, Bruce. Um, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes, I've, hopefully some really, um, really good information for everyone there around, um, as I said, like non-traditional funders um, that may uh, fund sport uh, applications. So, yeah, definitely um, worth uh, getting in touch and hopefully seeing if there's um, any support that you can kind of get towards the projects that you've kind of got in mind, really. So 
Um, yeah, thanks again for that. Um, so just into part three now. So um, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll start with a little bit on, on crowdfunder and easy fundraising and then looking at um, sponsorship um, and how you can kind of pull that money together to um, if you are needing to provide an applicant contribution, um, how you can kind of uh, do that. So. So, yeah, we'll just kick off with uh, crowdfunder. So uh, I'll play a short video, which hopefully for those who've not come across uh, crowdfunder or crowdfunding before um, will help to fill a bit of a gap. Here at Crowdfunder, we love working with people like you, people who have ideas, people who have passion, people who want to build a crowd and make great ideas happen. Crowdfunder will help you raise the money for your great idea from the community around you. We've helped thousands of people raise funds all over the UK. We believe the UK needs more great ideas like yours. So we'd like to help you start your very own crowdfunding journey. So how does it work? Firstly, you need to add your idea to our website. It could be for a startup business, a social enterprise, a charity, or your very own individual project. We don't mind what type of entity you are. All we ask is that your project benefits the community around you. Crowdfunder is a rewards-based platform. When people pledge money, you give them back a reward. This could be anything from an item or service to a special one-off experience. You set the target amount that you want to raise and the time period your campaign will run for. You can also ask for people's time and skills, and we advise you make a video to really get your passion across. So your project goes live, and you need to spread the word. Tell your friends, your family, your colleagues, your enemies, the postman, pets, everyone. If they love your idea, then they will pledge. And even more than that, they'll spread the word further. Funding on Crowdfunder is all or nothing. When your project finishes, if you've passed your funding target, you'll receive the money straight into your account. The best thing about Crowdfunder is the ability to create a sense of community and raise funds at the same time. Your backers become your customers. Remember, we're here to help you every step of the way. Together, we can crowdfund the future. So hopefully that was, um, yeah, that made a bit of sense there. So let me just uh, oops, skip through. So yeah, crowdfunding uh, is a way of raising money by getting other people to uh, back your idea with donations. So um, you can set up a campaign on crowdfunder.co.uk, as was mentioned in the video, and then start attracting donations. So if you think about those traditional kind of fundraising style pages, you're thinking of your uh, virgin money giving and um, uh, places like that. It's a similar sub, uh, type of concept where you're kind of putting what your cause is, um, putting a bit of information around um, what you're trying to achieve and, and, and what the um, how much funding you're needing to raise and then you just share it with your community they share it with their community and hopefully it kind of spirals and you start getting donations in um, difference I guess is that with this one you can add uh, rewards for donations so uh, as was kind of mentioned in there what those rewards look like can be completely up to you um, so some examples could be bearing in mind there's three like different kind of categories where you might get um, uh, people donating so members of your club or those who are kind of already involved in and around your club um, it might be something like we're gonna give you an, uh, an additional uh, a membership to the clubhouse um, when it's been when it's finished being refurbed which will give you discount if you want to hire the facility for anything it might be like parents might want to hire it for a kid's birthday party or um, if, you've, if you've got a bar there, it might be discounts for uh, food and beverages behind the bar if you're uh, a member of the clubhouse. So um, that could be something that you offered your uh, existing members, for example. Um, the wider community, um, so it might be something like if they if they donate, then they go into a draw for a stay at a local hotel um for example uh, or if you're getting donations from businesses it could be something like getting uh, their advert in a match day program particularly if you're a club that gets um 
gets a lot of spectators and, and you produce a programme. Or if you've got um, a relatively high level sports club in your area that have a stadium with a box, for example, have a look at the price of a, uh, a box there and go, actually, right, let's price that a little bit higher um, and then put it on there. And then businesses will still look at that. And even though it's priced higher, it will still look good for them because it will meet some of their strategic, strategic outcomes in terms of corporate social responsibility, um, in terms of donating to a good cause. But also it gives them a box where they can watch um, a sports match where they can invite clients or people they're working with and and that kind of thing. So it almost has that kind of dual aspect to, um, to them. And you you then get a um, uh, a nice sizable donation towards your cause. So um, definitely um, something to look at. And you can be creative with those rewards, as I kind of mentioned. So also the rewards don't need to be delivered instantly. So it doesn't need to be something that you tangibly, ha tangibly have to give now. It can be something that would be uh, received by the, the the person donating uh, when the project um, is delivered. Alongside this, and crowdfunder is the only one um, that this is applicable for, um, you can access partner funding through Sport England's Active Together Fund. Um, so they've worked with crowdfunder to effectively just try and um, support sports clubs who are trying to uh, use crowdfunder to raise money. So you can apply for up to 50% uh, of your initial crowdfunding target uh, up to a maximum of £10,000. So um, the, the the two conditions that you kind of need to have in place are that in order to receive that um, that bump up, you need to have raised 25% of your initial target already um, and you need to have had a minimum number of uh, people who've donated. So you couldn't have one person, for example, who's put a huge lump in um, to then activate that Sport England top up, you need a certain number of people to have backed it. So you can see with the example at the bottom there, the, if it was the, the, the maximum target of uh, £20,000, so you might be going, oh, we're going to spend 20 grand on um, doing something to our clubhouse. Um, so obviously you need to raise 25% of the initial target. So that's £5,000. Uh, when you hit that £5,000, you then get topped up by Sport England's Active Together Fund of 10,000. So you're now at 15 already. Um, and then you've only got five left to go before you've hit your target. Um, so that um, uh, that 5,000 pounds initial target that you need to raise, um, the minimum number of supporters you'd need would be 100. That's because the threshold of um, supporters that you need changes based on your total um your total target. So if it's £5,000, you only need 25 uh, people to donate. If it's 10000 then you need 50. If it's 15000 you need uh, 75. Or if it's anything above 15000 you need 100 people to, um, to donate towards your initial target. So um, fairly straightforward, hopefully. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's a great way of um, building up some extra funds. And um, I've just got another quick video here, and this is actually a football club um, and how they utilised Crowdfunder and um, the Active Together Funds to um, to develop themselves as a club. UK Football Club is about 110 year old. It's grassroots. The, the place was a mess, the roof had fallen down. Whoops. Covid had hit. We're going to run our money <laughs> before we get this work done. You know, we were in significant debt. We really wanted the club to be a, you know, a safe place, but a place you know, that was growing. I think for a football club to survive, it has to think differently. We, you know, we're working really, really hard to try and bring a different buzz to a football club. One that you know, provided great hospitality. And, and what I mean by that is great facilities you know, for our players, but also great facilities for our spectators. What we really want to try and do is you know, not just stand still and really work on trying to involve the local community. In spare time I've got, I come over here to help you guys at UKAFC. We want everybody to use this as, as like the, the social hub of, of the community. And that's the most important thing for us. We a new, fresh thinking committee. That allowed us all to make a decision together. And the decision was to reach out to Crowdfunder. I'm Murray Toms and I'm part of the football team at Crowdfunder. Crowdfunder brings people together around things that matter 
and in communities around the UK, football matters. I've been down to the crowdfund headquarters before. It was a no-brainer, really. We needed funding and we'd seen plenty of successful campaigns. What's happened here is absolutely fantastic. They set out to achieve a, a relatively modest total, but they grow some real momentum into what they're doing and the fans really got behind them. It also gave us a lot of encouragement to think about really you know, what we could do differently to develop a crowdfunding campaign that pulled everybody together. It's more than just giving, it's about behavioural change. It's about developing new digital skills and building a more sustainable future for the game. It drives meaningful fan engagement. So when supporters are invested financially and emotionally in what you're doing, it creates a really powerful bond with the community. And that caught the eye of Sport England, who pledged £4,000 of their own. And that's made a really big difference to the club. We've got aspirations to build upon our objectives to be able to give you know, some great facilities for our players. Uh, we want to look at our grandstands and you know, that kind of mindset never existed in this club. It's amazing really, the, you know, the help we've received from uh, Sport England and, and crowdfunding. The impact of the £4,000 pledge to our campaign has really set a buzz around you know, the, the whole community. It's really, really appreciated for a club of this size. And that's given us you know, some real edge to think about you know, what can we actually do next. So hopefully that's um, yeah, wet your appetite a little bit and just giving you a bit of an insight into um, into what can be achieved with with crowdfunder. So um, and obviously that that sport England top up as well. So um, yeah, definitely one to to be having a look at. Um, next we'll be looking at uh, easy fundraising. So um, we were due to have Ben Harper. Um, with us tonight from Easy Fundraising, but it's actually his um, anniversary. So um, I think for the sake of his marriage and making sure that he manages to get another year over the line, he um, he decided to pre-record uh, something with us. So um, I'll just um, play this quickly for you now. I'm just going to check to make sure that the um, sound is coming through effectively. Could everyone hear those last couple of videos OK? Is that a no? I've got some nods and some it was a bit faint, Aiden. Was it a bit faint? Is it okay? Yeah. Let's see if I can do something about the volume. Um, okay. Right. Fingers crossed. Should should be fine for the next one. So. Um, yeah. Very well. Thank you. Very well. Uh, thanks very much for yeah giving up your time. I know it's obviously the, the night of the the funding is your um, anniversary. So yeah, many <laughs> many congratulations um, thank for that. But much. yeah, thanks for taking the time to um, yeah to obviously deliver this for us. So yeah, I'll hand over to you for, to give us a bit of an insight into easy fundraising. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I thought if I joined you on my anniversary, uh, my wedding anniversary, it might be uh, yeah pain worse than death for uh, for me for that one. So no, thanks for the chance to to. Um, join you guys um, virtually and obviously have a bit of time in your session. Um, I'm just going to very quickly take you through Easy Fundraising, um, which is a fundraising solution for your club or team. Um, obviously, um, there's no chance to ask questions and things during this. I've shared my email address at the end of the slides. So if you feel like you've got any questions or you want a bit of additional support or you've tried Easy Fundraising and you want to make the most of it, um, and you'd like a bit of additional support for that, please just drop me an email. Um, more than happy to, to offer a bit of extra support. Uh, we're here to help. So Easy Fundraising um, is, is a, a fundraising, an online fundraising um, platform, and it works with your online shopping. So um, through our app, through our, um, through our donation reminder, and through our, um, our online um, shopping platform, you can visit us, do your online shopping, and that raises cash back for your club. Um, we've been going for over 16 years. I've not been here for 16. Um, uh, around four years for me at Easy Fundraising. I've seen a load of clubs do really, really well in that time. Um, but Easy Fundraising supports around 200,000 good causes uh, and all types of different causes from church groups to sports clubs like yourself. Um, all the way through to large national charities as well. And Easy Fundraising works really well, whether or not you're really small or really big. Um, it's, it's kind of one size fits all um, for success with Easy Fundraising. By the time you guys see this, um, we will have ticked over to £50 million pounds raised. Um, we've just hit that, so we'll be announcing that on the 5th of December. 
Um, so yeah, £50 million raised for our good causes, which we're extremely proud of. And all of that has come through simply online shopping. Um, so yeah, just just taking that time to visit Easy Fundraising before you do shopping has raised £50 million for um, good causes um, in the UK. And £5 million of that is just specifically for sports causes. So um, an incredible amount of funding. Uh, the benefits of easy fundraising for, for you and for your team is the best thing I think um, is that it's unrestricted funding. So um, not like a, a grant application, you don't have to tell us exactly where that pot of funding is going. It's just there for the benefit of your club. So it can be used on anything that will benefit your club. Um, so that could be um, paint for the changing rooms, that could be for a referee's qualification, that could be for um, some new banners around the pitches. It's whatever will benefit your club. Um, and once you've been paid that funding, obviously you can use that as a, a pot of funding to, to help support you and, and your club to grow. We find a lot of clubs find it really good because it's there also for running costs. So if you're struggling to pay for a winter pitch or you need some a repair to some lights or something like that, it's a really quick, um, it's a nice pot of funding to have there that you can kind of use for those things that um, grant funding or the fundraising is tricky to find. Um, it's free. Um, it's entirely free to use for you as a club and for anyone who shops for you. So um, for your players, for your coaches, for your volunteers, it's entirely free, um, regardless of the size or structure or how your, your club is set up. And another really good thing is that it's actually a free way for your supporters, um, for coaches, for players to actually give at, at no cost to your club. So it doesn't add anything on to their shopping. It doesn't ask the, them to top up. It doesn't ask them to donate a five or a ten or any of those sort of things. It generates cash back from the things that they're already going to be buying. So if they're buying a new pair of boots from Nike for £100, those boots will still be £100 from Nike. It just works that Nike will say thank you. Um, thank you to Easy Fundraising and to, to your club for bringing them as a customer. And they'll make a donation to your team. So it's a really nice way of going out to your community, especially when things are really tight and, and people haven't got any more money to donate. This is something that they can turn something they're usually doing and already doing like their food shopping for instance or getting a new mobile phone or renewing your car insurance all of those things we will be doing anyway um, but this is a way of, of giving a little bit back to the club um, through a behavior that they're already doing we work with over 8,000 retailers and that number's growing every day and we've got really really um, proud of our retailers that we work with we've got a really good relationship with them and they provide some amazing funding out to all of our teams um so you'll be happy to know we've got nike on there um one i particularly shocked with um, recently is nike um really good donations they've also got donations on sale items as well so uh, so they've got 1.5 percent on sale so um that that's something that not all retailers do but nike are a really good one so if you you treat yourself to a nice pair of boots or a training top or something like that for the season um for the winter months um, you can get a donation for the club at the same time you'll see a few others on here as well i won't go to all of them but you'll see a few grocery ones they now do weekly donations for most groceries so if you're doing your weekly food shop um, a lot of them it's around a pound a pound fifty um, every time you shop if you think of every single household that's involved with your club community if they're shopping with one of these um, one of these grocery retailers they can turn that into cash for your club um, we've also got some amazing ones on here like Trainline, Just Eat um, and Booking.com. Booking.com and Trainline tend to be ones people use for work and you can use easy fundraising for work and um, purchases and put that funding towards your club. So apologies for the Christmas images, but <laughs> it's, it's not just for um, not just for Christmas. Um, easy fundraising is something that will fundraise for you year round. So we particularly see people in January start to book travel um, with the, the kind of darker winter months here. People look to get a bit of summer sun and they get really nice donations, as you'd imagine, with people like Tui um, and Booking.com being able to give really, really good donations out there for big purchases. So it's something that can sit in the background and fundraise for your club throughout the year and give you that pot of funding that you can dip into if you do need to pay for somebody to do um a basic coaching qualification or you just need money for a ref that week it's a really good pot of funding for that um so i'm going to jump onto the easy fundraising website now and just show you exactly how to raise a donation after that i'll show you how your club can get involved i think it's always useful sometimes just to see exactly how easy fundraising works 
So, Ed, you're gonna have to give me a heads up if this uh, if this shares all right. Yep. No worries. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. All oh, there. Awesome. there we go. Um, so this is the easy fundraising website. So I'm signed in. I'm logged in. Um, and as soon as you visit the web page, you'll be asked to log in as you would do for any normal website. Um, and this is where I would go if I was going to make any sort of purchase um, online. So I've said Nike a lot. Actually, I'll just explore this page a little bit. You can see we've got increased donations at the moment. Obviously, everyone's been online um, shopping through Black Friday and everyone getting ready for Christmas. You can see my purchase there through Nike. So I've got a pending one of £2.67, uh, which is quite nice. Booking.com. Nice big one there, ten pounds for me coming. Um, again, another another lovely one through there, and then you can just see other retailers that we've got on site. But if I wanted to, as I said, if I wanted to buy that new pair of boots from Nike, I can search for a retailer in the top banner here, or I can just shop by category and click through and have a look there. But you'll see, as soon as I type Nike, I've got loads of different options in here. But let's use Nike because I quite like those um, as a retailer. And then this takes me to their page on Easy Fundraising. So I can have a little dig here and see. We've got 4% donations on full price, price items. Dunks are 2%. And for sale items, it's 1.5% on there. Little tip for you, it doesn't matter which button you click. Um, whichever one you click, whichever percentage is relevant when you check out, it will be applied. So you don't need to worry about which one of these you click. I always just tend to just click Shop Now, uh, and it takes you straight through to Nike. Once you're at Nike, it's exactly the same, um, exactly the same offers, exactly the same prices, and um, everything is entirely the same. You'll shop and check out exactly the same as you would um, using your Nike account. Once you've made that purchase, um, that, that amount, what you've spent is sent back to, um, the cashback uh, that you've raised is sent back to Easy Fundraising and allocated to your club's account. So you literally have to do nothing other than just shop. Um, so start your journey with Easy Fundraising, go through to your retailer, shop through there, and then that's added to your club's Easy Fundraising account. And that goes for all of your players, your coaches, everybody. All they have to do is just shop um, after visiting the platform, and that's added straight to the club's um, Easy Fundraising total. They don't have to allocate it. They don't have to do anything like that. They don't have to request it to be going anywhere. It's literally just a case of go to the website, find your retailer, and shop. And you'll see I've got a nice little message here. You visited Nike. If you made a purchase, any donations raised are on their way. And you'll be able to see those donations on your homepage, as you saw mine. Um, many of them will be pending for a, a short period of time, obviously to check that everything goes through um, and that your purchase is, is done. And once that's delivered, you usually get your cash back um, pretty quickly after that. So that's how to use um, Easy Fundraising as a shopper. In order for somebody to raise a donation for your club, your club has to be signed up with Easy Fundraising. Um, and I'm just going to show you really quickly how to do that. Um, it's really, really simple to do. Um, excuse me, go through this. Um, it's really, really simple to do. It takes about a minute and a half to get set up. And then once you're there, you're away and anyone can shop and find your club on Easy Fundraising. Um, so first thing to do is visit the Kent FA. Um, registration page that shows us that you've registered for Kent via Kent FA and it also helps me to give you a little bit more love as well uh, as one of my partners um, so please do scan that code there with your phone feel free to it's as easy to sign up through your phone as it is through um, a laptop so either, either works fine when you scan that code you'll be sent to this page here and that's our registration page at the top, you'll see a white box here that asks you for your club or team name. Just pop your name into there, pop your club's or team's name into there. Hit register now and it will take you through to another page, um, which will ask you for a little bit more details about you. Uh, and that's so we can get you set up as the admin for your account. So when you sign up to Easy Fundraising, you are saying that you're going to be the, the first admin. So the person who has, has set up that account, really. You'll see my colleague Becky here did this one. As soon as you hit register my cause, you're away and your club is there ready to um, ready for people to shop for and to support. 
the next few steps take you through and just ask a little bit more information about your club. Um, so I, I didn't screenshot them here because it's literally one box. Um, but we'll ask you a, a few words about your club, what you're fundraising for. Uh, and you'll also get the opportunity after registration to upload a logo, um, which, again, we really encourage you to do that. And just take a little bit of time adding in that information, because when you send your page out um, to all of your parents, to all of your, your players, um, that's the information that they're going to see. So if you can be really specific on there, if you're raising for a, a referee qualification or if it's for um, an away trip that you're doing, really put that information in there because I think it helps people to to feel like when they are doing their shopping, they can, they can kind of fundraise for that. You'll also be prompted to book a coaching call. So every single one of our courses and, and teams is, um, we've got coaches here who can help and support you. They're absolutely amazing. And they spend all day, every day on the phone, just talking to easy fundraisers and helping you get started and to make the most of it. So please do take that call. Um, our courses that take a, a coaching call um, do way better than those that don't. So please do um, make the most of those guys. I thought I'd show you one of your Kent FA uh, clubs that has, um, mm that's got started so fleet down united fc um, they've got 27 supporters they've got they've raised 345 pounds and this is the page that they set up as part of their registration so they went through that registration process and this is the page that it generates and this is the one that your club will have that you can then send out to all of your players coaches sponsors anyone who you think will will be doing online shopping that can support you they're doing really well i think they've raised around 175 pounds just this year um, with a couple of people shopping for them so um we're gonna we're gonna offer them a little bit more support as well just help um really get that fundraising on because we've got some clubs that are raising in excess of ten thousand pounds a year um through easy fundraising just by getting their sponsors involved um, and getting some businesses shopping for them so that's something we, i'd really encourage you to do if you've not thought about maybe my our sponsors could buy some stuff for us once you've got your page and um, you can go to um, a section on our website you'll see on the top banner it's called promote my cause and every single member of easy fundraising who supports your course has promote my cause it's not just the admin so feel free to to get your players get your um, get your coaches everyone can can share the, the resources from promote my cause and this gives you pre-written information messages images that you can send out to your community so you don't have to write a um, a message about easy fundraising all that's contained here and you can find the link for your registration as pa page as well you can see that i support telford ajax which is my friend's football club they've bought their first kit through um, easy fundraising this year so they've not had to go back out to the parents and ask um, they've literally just said can you shop for us and at the end of the year they've been able to buy next year's kit which um yeah as a parent having to pay for loads and loads of sports it's quite nice to not be asked again for um for a donation for kit so um they've done really well and they've used the refer a friend um there's a refer a friend option in here which at the moment if you share that with all of your players as soon as they raise five pounds we'll double it um so it's a nice way to get that first message out Last things, I thought I'd preempt some questions just in case because I haven't got a chance to ask them. But do you have to be a charity or um, community amateur sports club? Absolutely not. Um, we'll take all clubs, all sizes. So even if you're a club that's development at the moment and you're not actually um, constituted, we will help and support you as well. So um, you don't have to be a particular um, funding body but what we do have to see is as part of that registration exactly um, we have to see where that funding is being paid into so if you have a club account that's perfect if not we'll just ask you a few more questions to check exactly where that funding is going will it cost us anything absolutely not so this service is entirely free our app is free all of our um, donation reminders that you can plug into your computer and all of that is completely free and um, there is no charge to do that you're also not charged for taking your funding out we pay our causes every three months and um, we don't charge you for that so easy, how is easy fundraising funded um, a question we always get um, we're funded with our relationship with our retailers so once we hit certain milestones with them we'll get paid uh, that way and then on some of our purchases um, we'll actually take a very small proportion of what you raise through your cashback um, to easy fundraising plus we also sell advertising on our website um, which covers the majority of what um, we need to keep developing and, and move this uh, amazing product forward and then finally i've already covered it 
pretty much, but how we paid our donations. So as I said, every three months we have donation day at Easy Fundraising, and that's where we'll pay everything out that's been raised for the last three months. And you can choose to have that via cheque, or you can have that back transferred straight into your account, which is what most clubs will have, so you've got instant access to that funding. That's everything um, from me. As I said before, please do um, email me if you've got any questions or you'd just like some additional support, if you've got any any questions whatsoever. Um, as you can probably tell, I love easy fundraising and, and, and being able to see the funding uh, and what it does for clubs, um, just having that, that additional pot of funding. So please do get involved. Uh, we'd love to have you with us uh, and, and uh, yeah, getting the, some of those donations next time we do our donations in February. Brilliant. No, it's, uh, I mean, this... It's exactly what it says on the tin. It seems, isn't it? It's it's easy. You can, your club can be making money whilst you're asleep, rather than needing to be the traditional fundraising <laughs> way where you're out there kind of hassling people for money. This is, yeah, it's uh, you're not asking people to do anything different. They're just doing what they would be doing anyway, but raising money in the process. So, yeah, yeah, very well, thank Oops. you. So, um, yeah. Hopefully that's um yeah been really useful to get a bit of an idea about uh, easy fundraising and yeah obviously it's worth just kind of setting yourself up and then uh, yeah sharing it with your club members and then just waiting for the money to roll in fingers crossed so um so yeah really a good one to look um look at getting started with um last section tonight is um sorry Claire I'm giving you the graveyard shift um but yeah just uh, on around um attracting sponsors uh, and partners to hopefully build up that the applicant contribution if you're you're needing it for for bigger projects so thanks Aidan um okay hopefully I'm going to make this work um so I appreciate you've all had a lot of information this evening so I'm going to skip a few slides and just go to where I think the key areas are um I've been doing sort of commercial partnerships and sponsors for over 20 years so I think I've got a good idea of what works and what doesn't work now but if you do have any questions please don't hesitate to give me a call i'm also more than happy to come down and meet with your clubs and do a bit of brainstorming if you if you feel that'd be helpful so um, my details should be at the end of the slide i believe so let me see if i can go through to the next page and i'm really sorry if you can hear my puppy in the background um yeah she's a pickle <laughs> um so the first i guess there's a bit of a process that i use when i'm trying to secure sponsors and partners with kent fa and it's all about um, what is your USP? What makes you stand out from the club that's three miles, five miles down the road? And I think that's really important because that, that will fundamentally be your elevator pitch when you first reach out to local companies in your area. So it could be something as simple as the provision that you provide, whether it's disability or female. It could be your longevity as a club in the local community, or it could be the work that you're already doing within the community with local groups, for example. So really make sure you've kind of nailed and your your USP as a club, because that will become your number one sales tool as you sort of move forward. The next part of it is all about understanding what you have as your assets available to you. So I always start off by creating a really simple Excel sheet and looking at the partnerships that we've got already, what they're sponsoring. So it could be a shirt sponsor, it could be um, a stadium sponsor, it could be um, an event that you've got coming up, whatever that may be. I kind of build a spreadsheet that says this is the opportunity. This is the partner that we've got at the moment. This is the term for that partnership. So moving forward, we're always looking for multi-year partnerships because it's a lot easier to keep a partner than it is to keep going out every season to get a new one. Um, the financial implications and also what you've promised um, that partner because it gives you like a toolkit to know when you need to do renewals and also where the gaps are. So you could, by creating this Excel sheet, see that okay you need shirt sponsors for your under 12 girls team or you need a sponsor for your FETS team or there's an opportunity to maybe get a sponsor for your um, stand at your club so really look at the assets you have at your disposal and it helps you find the gaps moving forward but also kind of think outside the box so if you are a club where you do tickets to your matches then actually there's an opportunity there to get a ticket partner um, Obviously, we've got the standard with perimeter boards and everything else, but there are lots of things where you can get quite creative and try and find a partner because partners are and local businesses are always always looking to support um, things that are a bit out, outside the box, really. 
So you've got USP, you know where your gaps are, you know where you need to get a sponsor. Um, sometimes, I'll be honest with you, timing is going to be key. Sometimes you can call someone and you can get through to the gatekeeper and have a very quick conversation. They want to get on board straight away. Sometimes it takes a bit of work. And this for me is probably the area of attracting sponsors that takes the biggest part of work. And um, there's a lot of research that has to go into it for you as a club, but also so you know the local business community in your area. But what I will say is the biggest resource you have at your disposal is your members. So whether it's the volunteers, it's the players themselves, it's parents or carers, you know, they all work for people. So many companies now have got community pots. So whether it's only a couple of hundred pounds or it's a lot larger, so many people have access or businesses have access to these community pots. So use your network that you've got at your disposal to try and reach out to see where there's some opportunities there as well. Also, spend a bit of time looking at your pipeline. So you could look at local businesses in the three to five mile radius of your club, for example, and start building a pipeline. Do some research on the websites. Look at uh, LinkedIn. Great place to do a bit of um, research. So you can actually understand the values of that company. And do they actually align to your club's values as well? Because it's all very well having a sponsor that's going to come on board and give you money for a season. But if they're values do not align to yours as a club that part that sponsor will not stay for another season and then you're back to square one again so you really want to try and align your values from the club to the local to the sponsors as well because it just needs longevity that partnership um i'm gonna try and go i've lost my bit i can't go forward there we <laughs> oh no aiden you might have to do it it's not letting me do yeah, it no sorry yeah thank you um what i've realized in the last three years the world of sponsorships and partnerships has changed massively. Before COVID, I would say it's a lot easier. Now, obviously, everything that's happened with local businesses and the economy is a lot trickier. So there's a bit more work that unfortunately needs to go into it, but it does create a great opportunity. Now, on the left hand side, these are organised local businesses that I see in sort of sectors that are really open to supporting not um, grassroots clubs. Um, there's some great opportunities along there and just different sectors that it's may worth tapping into. One um, one brilliant um, idea that I saw a few months ago was, I think it was a county FA up north, but one of their clubs, um, they had a new boys provision. I think they had three new boys team in a certain um, age group and they actually went to Twitter and they tagged in 10 local barbers and said, we need a shirt sponsor. They kind of created an opportunity without too much of financials behind it, similar to what we've got here. And they tagged in about 10 different barbers and they managed, they got three sponsorship offers off the back of that. So by doing a bit of, bit, little bit of research about local business in your area, trying to match potentially the team to that local business, you can create a nice opening opportunity to try and have those conversations um, and it's just getting quite creative I would always say if you know someone in your club who has an in at some of these uh, business that you've recognised that you want to um, work with then definitely ask for that introduction because it makes it a lot easier to get through to the gatekeeper that's which is always the hardest bit but once you're through to the gatekeeper then you will be fine Aidan sorry would you mind going to the next yeah. one please so how do you get out there and meet? So again, it's asking for introductions to your network. Where possible, attend some local business networking events. A lot of them are free. The Kent and Victor Chamber of Commerce do some great ones. They do some free ones online. Um, and they also do some face-to-face -face ones, which I think are about 10, 20 pounds. And you can attend those and meet loads of local businesses. Um, they're really good, actually. They're really worth looking into. But what I would say is that when you're having your meetings with uh, potential sponsors or your conversations, have an idea. So refer back to the assets that we said on step two. So you know roughly where you need um, the sponsorship, but also think about things that go above and beyond. My experience has shown that whenever you kind of over exceed on what you said you were going to do, you get that longevity with that, that sponsor. Again, that gives you that multi-year so you don't have to keep going back to stage one every time. So it could be that you invite them to present awards at your end of season um, presentation. There might be volunteering opportunities for their colleagues at your club, which is always great. Obviously, we all need vol uh, more volunteers into the game. 
what social uh, media and website exposure could them could you do a monthly offer on your social media pages for that business could it, it could be that the business that you're trying to work with or to get, trying to get on board as a sponsor works with the local charity? So is there a way that you can work together to create some sort of charity fundraising event, which is a great community initiative and really helps to segment and cement that partnership and that sponsorship going forward? So these are just, just different things almost have in your back pocket. Um, so when you first start having those conversations with potential sponsors. Sorry, Aidan. Sure. Thank you. Um, this for me is always going to be the biggest key area. If you can get this right, then you will, you've got a greater chance of success to keeping those sponsors for a longer term. Um, so what I would say is you've got through the gatekeeper, you've now got a, a sponsorship lined up to start the season. And so many clubs, unfortunately, don't always do this and it can be quite tricky in the long term. But I would always suggest just coming up with a one page agreement. We are working with the company at the moment to try and get some templates for our grassroots clubs that they'll be able to use and adapt accordingly. Um, but just come up with a one page agreement so everyone knows what the expectation is and what the promise is from both parties. It'll protect you. It protects the sponsor as well. And it just means you have a more professional approach to what you're doing as a club as well. Again, if anyone needs any help with this, please do get in touch. I'm happy to um, provide some um, support on that as well. So you've got your partnership. You all signed up, ready to go, hitting the ground running. Um, one of the key things that I think is really important for any sort of sponsorship is make sure they feel included as part of your club, as part of the community, your, your club community. So again, you know, where possible at the end of the season, create a end of season review. Again, it can be as simple as a one pager, but it could be like milestones for that team or bigger milestones for the club that they've created as, um, together with that sponsor. It just makes that sponsor feel valued. It makes them feel involved. It makes them feel part of the community, which then helps again with the longevity and um, the renewal of the sponsorship going forward for future seasons. Um, where possible, over deliver. Um, obviously at no cost to you and the club, always try and cover your costs, that's an absolute must. But where possible, try to over deliver. So you're meeting your um, objectives as the club, the sponsorship, but also to help them meet theirs as a company as well. Um, so volunteering for so many companies is huge now. So giving back to the local community. So if you're working with a company that has um, a big green sustainability element to the CSR, well, why don't you work together with a community club and do a community litter pick? It's great for the company and you as a partner, as a sponsor, and it's great for your local community and where you where your club is so it's kind of a win-win for all um, I appreciate that takes um, management and everything like that but it's these small things that they really do make a difference to the sponsor going forward Aidan yeah. um, just the last bit like I said this has been really really quick and I'm more than happy to come and see you all um, on a one-to-one -one basis and go through some other elements if that's of interest but as I said before get creative there are no rules um, do what works for or work, what you you know what will work for the club um local businesses always like something that's a bit quirky a little bit different and outside um the normal realms of just branding you will have some companies that are quite happy just to have their branding on their shirts um and don't really want much to do sort of moving forward but my experience is that if that happens then it's unlikely they're renew if you can get those companies on side then you have a much better chance of longevity for that sponsor going forward now, this is what I'm going to hand over slightly to Aidan, because one of the elements that has been brilliant that some clubs are doing and more and more clubs are doing is working really well is not just looking for commercial partnerships. They're also looking at linking up with local charities and community groups in their in their local area. So for those of you who don't know, Aidan um, has set up New Dads United and which is actually Aidan, I'll let you introduce um, New Dads United to the, to the group. Uh, yeah, so New Dad United is um, basically a social and recreational football provision. Um, I became a New Dad six months ago and um, whilst it's amazing, it means that I'm not playing football as much as I used to, obviously with the family commitments on the weekends now. So, um, yeah, wanted to set up a space where uh, others in the same situation could come together and still play the 11 aside game. And um, we had over 100 um people have expressed interest in joining and we've had several games over the last uh, few months now and it's operating really well. What I was conscious of is that um, 
it, there's not much support for dads generally um uh, becoming new dads and the different stresses and strains that they'll go through and wanted to kind of develop a partnership with someone that can provide a bit of support to the dads should they need it at any point um so i went kind of scouring around to see are there anywhere that kind of offers um those kind of services and um managed to come across dads unlimited which is a charity based in ashford um who yeah provide um support for dads in terms of their mental health dads who are maybe split up from the partners um or or single parents that kind of thing so um and yeah had had a discussion with them and kind of talked to them about what what we were trying to do as an organization and they kind of explained what they were trying to do and um yeah looked at a few opportunities that we um where we can kind of collaborate and do things together moving forwards and so yeah they were really happy to come on board and be um the club's official charity partner so they are our headline sponsor on the front of the shirt but it's more than that we um are also doing a lot of work with them uh, around kind of supporting the dads within our community as well so um yeah it's um it's uh, as claire kind of says it's it's around trying to create that additional value uh, and activating um a sponsor not just necessarily having them kind of uh, as a, a label on the shirt really so yeah absolutely and i think for a lot of businesses where they see us as a big part of their organisation that will be key and they want to work with new dads from Nitus and dads unlimited and something like that so and you don't know what other opportunities that will open up down the road but that's just a consideration and I guess the last thing um, just to point out is try where possible which and I appreciate this bit can be quite tricky is to establish relationships with the local media the local press um, they this goes above match reports and things like that it could be you know, your club could be 125 years next year. So what have you got planned? And it's all that sort of the above and the beyond stuff that they will want to know and want to interview your club about. Because what this does is, A, it raises your profile as a club. It raises your profile to the local business community and also to the members alike. And it that will eventually open some doors as well for um, potential partners as well. So that is a very, very quick. Oh, sorry, I don't gone too far. Sorry. That's my fault. Um, that I'm gonna lead it. And um, that is a very quick yeah. sort of overview on the sponsorship side of things. My details are up there. Um, Club Matters from Sport England is a great resource to go and have a look at. There's lots of fantastic guides on there that are worth considering. Um, but like I said, in the new year, very happy to come down and have chats with people. If you need help with um, creating the assets or looking at the I guess the planning tools to help then go out and look at sponsors then I'm more than happy to come and um, do a bit of brainstorming with you and that's kind of it my details are on there but just want to say thank you to all of you for everything you do for the grassroots game in Kent um, it doesn't go unnoticed so thank you very much. Awesome thanks so much for that Claire and um, yeah some really good uh, advice there that hopefully will um, yeah will be, will be taken on board and, um, and utilised so um, just conscious of time, and I know obviously you've you've, you've given up two hours tonight, but I'm I'm, I'm hopeful that you found the, the two hours we've we've kind of had together being really um, really beneficial and giving you a lot of ideas and, and ways that you're going to kind of be generating uh, money for your club. So, just a couple of final thoughts. So we didn't actually mention it in in this one, but I thought it's worth um, just kind of picking up at the end uh, because it went live uh, last week. So uh, the Howden's Kitchens, I think you'll have seen an email come through from me uh, last week anyway, but um, uh, Howden's Kitchens, um, so that's open again. So you can apply for a free kitchen for your clubhouse uh, as long as you either own it uh, or you have the leasehold for the clubhouse for uh, the next five years and are also either a two or three star club uh, or one star England accredited club with eight or more teams. So the deadline for that's the end of January. Um, if you are going to be applying, um, just drop me an email and um, yeah, we can add you to the list and just make sure that we're on hand to be able to provide uh, any support that you need uh, regarding that. But we got six clubs um, who got awarded it um, in the first round, which was in the summer, which was one of the highest in the country. Um, and yeah, so we're hoping we've already had six clubs that have said they're interested in applying again this time round. So um, yeah, don't miss out on what could be a free new kitchen for your clubhouse. Uh, the grass pitch maintenance fund. So Lee picked that up in the football foundation section. Um, 
the key thing to stress because some people get nervous around this you don't need a lease or a license in order to apply um for the funding there's up to 12 uh, thousand uh, per pitch depending on pitch size and whether the pitch is currently a good um, pitch or not um, and there's 300 plus pitches across the county now that are uh, receiving investment so make sure your pitch is a part of that um, there's no reason to complain about the quality of grass pitches and not apply to this program so um, yeah get in touch with me if you're um, keen to progress that um, and then just generally on facility development bits and pieces. So if you um, have got a facility development project in your mind and, and you want to have a discussion about it, um, you can either jump on our website and submit um, an inquiry on there and then we'll get in touch to kind of talk through the project um, or just yeah, drop, drop me an email um, and yeah, I'll get back to you and we can um, have a look at how we can try and progress things. So, um, but yeah, hopefully that's... Um, yeah, hopefully that's been really useful tonight and you may get some questions uh, that pop into your head tonight or tomorrow in like a few days time. Just drop me an email if you've got any more um, and yeah, happy to chat and, uh, and come down and, and, and visit you as well and um, see where we can best support. So, but yeah, thanks um, again to everyone that's um, that's delivered tonight. I think it's been really, really valuable for everyone and um and yeah, everyone uh, definitely appreciate the time that you, and effort you put into delivering tonight. So thanks again for that. Um, yeah, I'll um, yeah, I'll I'll be around for um, a couple of minutes for any questions that you might.